Today, we're going to recap the plot of the 2021 movie A Writer's Odyssey. The story unfolds in a distant ancient city where the faint voice of a young girl echoes within underground caves. A man rushes towards the sound of his daughter's voice, but his path is blocked by a radiant aura, like that of a deity. However, it's revealed that this entire scenario was just a dream belonging to a man named Guan Ning. His daughter, Tangerine, has been missing for more than six years, and he continues to wait patiently atop a hill. Finally, a truck passes by on the road, and this seemingly ordinary event triggers an intense emotional reaction in Guan Ning. Two men are driving carefully through thick fog when suddenly a bunch of rocks is thrown at their truck. The rocks break the windshield, shattering it, and forcefully knock off the side mirrors. Guan Ning is revealed to be behind these attacks, as he cleverly throws rocks at an incredibly fast speed, somehow making them curve in the air. The truck swerves and finally crashes on the side of the road. Guan Ning takes this chance to rush at the driver, hitting him repeatedly with a stick. He shows the driver a picture of his missing daughter and demands to know where she is. But just as the situation gets more intense, the second man comes out of the truck. He quickly knocks Guan Ning down, allowing both men to escape. The police arrive shortly afterward and apprehend the man, mistaking Guan Ning for one of the human traffickers. Fortunately, he seizes an opportunity to strike one of the officers when they're momentarily distracted. This allows him to break free and escape, eventually finding refuge in a woman's car. Curiously, it appears as though she was intentionally waiting for him. As events unfold, it's revealed that the woman's name is Ling Strangely, she possesses an intricate knowledge of the man's life, including the smallest of details, such as his recurring dreams about his daughter. She takes Guan Ning to her office and shows him that they've found five different girls who could potentially be his daughter, thanks to their company's extensive resources. Sadly, after so many years, he can't recognize his child from the pictures. Ling promises to use their advanced DNA technology to locate his daughter. However, in return, she asks Guan Ning to do a favor for her boss, Li, who also happens to be the company's owner. Ling is aware of his unique ability to control the objects he throws and wants him to kill a writer named Kong. This writer uses himself as the main character in his novel, where there's an evil deity called Red Mane. Strangely, every time this character is harmed in the story, Kong's boss falls seriously ill. They've tried various ways to stop the author from writing the story, but he refuses to cooperate. As a result, Ling's boss believes that the only way to break this curse is to end the author's life. Guan Ning has a tough time believing the strange story, but he's stuck and has to agree to the deal to find his daughter. He starts listening to the author's audiobooks while on a boat and realizes they match his dreams almost exactly. In the dreamlike places he sees when he sleeps, the main character Kong is running from bounty hunters who have special powers. Kong keeps running even though he's hurt badly. Finally, he reaches the edge of a cliff with enemies all around, trying to kill him. Luckily, his sister shows up and saves him by using her spear to defeat the attackers. She tells him to run away from the city and pushes him off the cliff into the water. The woman fights the hunters alone, slashing at them and avoiding their hits with quick moves. She manages to beat many of the soldiers while their leader watches and plans to attack. Finally, the old man joins the fight. He hits the woman hard, sending her flying backward. At the same time, Kong recovers in the water. Instead of following his sister's advice to escape, he starts climbing back up the mountain. He can't abandon his family. Finally on solid ground again, Kong spots his sister badly hurt on the ground. She tries to protect him by telling him to run. But before she can finish, the old man steps on her and fatally stabs her in the back. Kong rushes to her, crying as he watches her breathe her last breath. He notices that the enemy is also hurt from the fight. It turns out, the hunter was sent by the deity called Red Mane. The man laughs and informs Kong that he's trapped with nowhere to go. He gets really mad and pulls the spear out of the man's back, making the hunter scream in pain. Kong doesn't listen to the man begging for mercy. He sticks the spear into the hunter's heart, getting back at him for what he did to his sister. After burying his family, Kong decides he won't run away like his sister said. Instead, he wants to confront the evil god and not be a victim anymore. Before he goes, the armor that was on the hunter breaks apart and flies at Kong. It sticks to him like a bug and goes into his blood. A scary eye shows up in the middle of the armor. It tells Kong that it was drinking the old man's blood before he killed him. The armor thinks Kong's plan to defeat a god is interesting. It wants to watch and guides Kong to the place where Redmain's temple is. At the same time, Guan Ning arrives in the city where the author lives and spots the man leaving his house. He starts following the writer to find an opportunity to attack, but he's led to a library instead. With no better option, he grabs a book and tries to blend in. However, Kong notices the suspicious person quite soon, since the library is almost empty. Kong walks up to him and questions his intentions. 
but Guan Ning reacts fast, claiming to be a devoted fan of the author. Kong is pleased to be recognized and starts asking about Guan Ning's background. He eventually learns that the man traveled across the sea to get here. Guan Ning's surprise presence seems to have helped the writer overcome his problem in creating a new character, and Kong starts writing right away due to this sudden inspiration. The story moves forward, with the main character journeying across vast oceans, evading sea monsters as he gets nearer to the deity's temple. Finally, Kong reaches a city where he witnesses a festive celebration. Colorful statues are exhibited, and the sound of drums fills the air. Not sure what's happening, he joins the crowd as they head to the outskirts of town. There, at the center, stands a massive statue of Red Mane. The people pay homage by bowing continuously. The statue's arm is lifted, pointing towards a nearby town. To his astonishment, everyone readies their weapons and chants the deity's name, preparing for a deadly battle against their neighbors. The demon armor explains that the deity thrives on human suffering and has destroyed most of the cities, leaving only two standing. The townsmen charge across the battlefield, while the opposing archers desperately shoot at the invaders. Arrows rain down, causing casualties among the charging forces. However, the situation takes a swift turn when a fleet of dragons made from hot air balloons appear, headed toward the neighboring town. The sight terrifies the archers, who begin firing wildly into the sky. The dragon riders rain down jars of tar onto the enemies below, covering them in highly flammable material. The bad guys shoot fire arrows at the enemy's gates, setting them on fire. Kong feels really disgusted as he sees people screaming and burning alive because of the evil god's followers. After the big fight, the main character goes into the city. He sees guys stealing and killing everyone they see. Just when he's trying to understand what's happening, a horn sounds from far away. The people in the city get scared and bow down because a bunch of knights in red armor ride in on horses. Kong hides behind buildings and notices the knights' flags look like the mark on the hunters. This means the knights are followers of the evil god. The horsemen ride off, blowing their horns once more. This causes people to run away in fear, shouting about a curfew being enforced. At the same time, Guan Ning is trying to lead the author away from the populated areas so he can try to kill him without anyone seeing. They go to an abandoned field that's overgrown with plants. Kong starts hearing a lullaby from a distant place, but Guan Ning is too tense to notice the music. The author suddenly gets a new burst of inspiration after hearing the song. He starts writing again, creating a character based on the lullaby's lyrics. The story keeps going, with the main character chasing after the Red Knights without thinking. He spots a young girl in the alleyways, desperately trying to save her friend. However, when he takes a closer look, he realizes that the boy has been dead for a while. Kong assists the girl in burying her friend. During this, he learns that Red Mane has forbidden people from leaving their homes after dark, warning that disobedience results in death for all who defy the orders. The girl plays a flute to remember her friend, but a knight hears it and comes to the graveyard quickly. Kong thinks the knight will hurt them for breaking the curfew. So, Kong and the girl run away, and the knight follows them. They race through the city and try to climb buildings. But the knight smashes through things and chases them on the roofs. Kong carries the girl while running. The knight jumps again, almost catching them, crashing through roofs and landing inside buildings. The knight keeps going after them, breaking walls easily. Kong has a plan to trick him by using a straw figure instead of the girl. The main character leaps off the buildings, narrowly avoiding the attacker and causing him to crash to the ground. He keeps running while dodging the attacks, but eventually gets cornered by the knight. The knight grabs the decoy, only to discover it's just made of straw. Kong charges at the enemy and lands a direct hit on the head. But the attack doesn't work well, the knight quickly recovers and kicks Kong across the field. The knight takes out a weapon from his mask, and surprisingly, it's revealed that he is Guan Ning underneath. Just before the knight is about to deliver the final blow, the girl shouts, making him pause. The warrior starts turning around, shifting his attention to the young girl. As the sun sets, the knight's behavior becomes odd, losing control of his body. Eventually, he stops moving entirely, giving Kong the chance to escape with the girl. At the same time, Guan Ning sneaks up behind the author, who's absorbed in writing. Strangely, he starts having visions as if he's chasing the girl in the novel. Kong suddenly notices his friend is gone, but then he's struck by rocks that knock him to the ground, making him scream in pain. Guan Ning continues throwing stones, and one strikes the writer's forehead, sending him tumbling into a trench. Guan Ning emerges from his hiding spot and tries to finish off the writer. He sings the lullaby for his daughter as if trying to justify his actions. Surprisingly, he hears the same song Kong mentioned earlier and realizes it's the lullaby only his daughter would know. The man runs fast, following the music. He gets back to the city and sees a homeless boy on the ground, singing the song while looking through trash. 
Guan Ning asks the boy where he learned the song, but his strong feelings scare the boy, and they both run through the streets. The man chases the boy a lot, but he starts seeing the visions again, like he's chasing the girl from the story, acting as the warrior. Guan Ning ignores the visions and keeps running. But as night comes and the streets get dark, he loses sight of the boy too. Without any other choice, he decides to meet the writer again to finish what he started. They meet on a rooftop, and the author begins discussing his novel. Surprisingly, Kong reveals that he created a new character inspired by Guan Ning and used the lullaby he heard earlier to shape the little girl named Tangerine. Guan Ning is shocked by this. He takes the notes and reads them. He realizes that what he saw in his visions matches the stories of the Crimson Knight. This means Kong's writing has made a different world alongside theirs, with alternate versions of people, like his daughter Tangerine. It explains why Li wants to kill the writer, as the book can change things in their world too. After realizing the truth, Guan Ning contacts Ling to inform her that he's quitting. He wants Kong to finish the book so that his daughter can be saved in the other world. Meanwhile, Kong and the girl manage to escape from the Red Knight. They continue through the city that's filled with suffering. They eventually reach the girl's home, where Kong learns that her parents also died for defying the curfew. Before they can catch their breath, a group of Redmain's followers burst in and start looting the home, taking everything they can. Tangerine refuses to let go of her parents' belongings and plans to fight against the evil men. Kong decides to protect the girl at all costs. The attackers come charging at them angrily, but suddenly, Kong's demon armor awakens and cuts through the enemies. The armor's swords make quick work of them, killing them easily. The men try to fight back, but the demon armor moves incredibly fast, taking them down one by one with ease. Blood splatters as the armor fights. The armor is immune to regular weapons, so the attackers can't harm it. It keeps slashing through them relentlessly. After defeating all the enemies, the armor tries to attack Kong too, but surprisingly, it can't harm him. Kong is in control of the armor's movements, and he remains unharmed. Recognizing the evil intentions of the demon, Kong forces the monster to stab itself and kneel down, asserting his dominance over it. The armor realizes that Kong's blood, which it had consumed, must have celestial origins. It returns to Kong's body, promising obedience from now on. With this newfound ally, Kong decides to head straight for Redmain's temple. They arrive in a massive courtyard, where they see numerous crimson warriors sitting on the ground. Surprisingly, the enemies don't attack them immediately. Kong approaches the knights carefully and realizes that they're unresponsive, almost like they're asleep. It turns out that the purpose of the curfew was to conceal the secrets of the Red Knights. They become immobilized right after sunset. They continue forward and enter a large building. Kong calls out for the deity to appear, but there's no response except for distant drumming sounds. Suddenly, Tangerine notices something terrifying, the huge statue in front of them starts moving. They realize that the drumming was actually the sound of heartbeats. The enormous deity raises its arms, causing rocks on its body to crumble due to the powerful vibrations. The deity grabs a massive stone and hurls it at the pillars, blocking the exit to trap Main looks at Kong with interest and sniffs him like an animal, confirming that Kong is indeed the son of Tian, his greatest rival and friend. The deity becomes enraged at the memory of his nemesis and challenges Kong to avenge his father. Redmain offers to show Kong the place where he killed his father, suggesting that Kong should kill him in the same way. On the other side, Guan Ning has taken the author back to his home so he can finish writing the book. However, he finds a strange picture of Ling's boss, Li, on a shelf. It turns out that Kong's father was Li's business partner and supposedly died in an accident while Li was present. This discovery makes Guan Ning suspicious of Li's true intentions. He tells Kong they should leave for a safer place. Unbeknownst to them, Ling overhears their conversation. She realizes that her boss might be hiding something sinister related to Kong's father's death, which likely wasn't an accident. Ling calls her boss to demand the truth, but he threatens her instead, warning that betrayal will lead to dire consequences. Ling returns to her car and discards her phone, planning to quit. However, one of Li's men knocks her unconscious in the rain by electrocuting her, leaving her helpless. Meanwhile, Guan Ning brings Kong to the library so he can finish the book. Guan Ning loads up golf balls and prepares to fight if needed. As he expected, assassins sent by Li follow them to the building and attack Guan Ning on sight. He manages to trick one assassin and hits him on the head, but the attack doesn't work well as the enemy quickly recovers. Another assassin, who can control electricity, pours water on Guan Ning and shocks him with high voltage. Guan Ning runs and tackles the other assassin, knocking them both down. He continues using golf balls against the assassins. The one who controls electricity grabs a large fan and charges at Guan Ning, trying to harm him. Thankfully, Guan Ning fights off both attackers long enough to create an opportunity to escape from being killed. 
However, the electricity controlling assassin soon finds Quan Ning and traps him with no escape. The assassin gets closer to make the kill, but unexpectedly, when he touches Guan Ning, the attack backfires and sends him flying across the room. It turns out that this was a trap set by Guan Ning. He had insulated his hands ahead of time to counter the electric attack. Guan Ning returns to the lobby and strikes the other assassin when he's not looking, knocking him to the ground. Just when it seems the fight is over, the enemy injects a serum into himself, gaining superhuman strength. He sends furniture flying and leaps out like a wild beast. The assassin charges at Guan Ning, avoiding all projectiles and slamming him into the walls. Fortunately, Ling regains consciousness and frees herself. Guan Ning is being thrown around, and the situation is dire. Before the man can be killed, Ling leaps onto the assassin and repeatedly stabs him. However, her attacks have little effect, and she's thrown off easily. Despite striking the man multiple times, she's overpowered by the assassin's strength and thrown to the floor. In a last-ditch effort, Guan Ning grabs the golf balls and throws them at the assassin. The man tries to bat the projectiles away, but Guan Ning's trick shot, using two balls, lands with incredible force and knocks out the enemy. Meanwhile, in the parallel world, Kong has followed Red Main to an open field where a massive tree stands in the center. The deity informs Kong that this is the place where he killed Tian, to remind him daily of his best friend's betrayal. The giant then lunges at Kong, attacking with a massive fist. Kong separates from the armor and charges directly at the deity. Both Kong and the armor attack the deity's legs, but their strikes miss as Red Main displays remarkable speed despite his immense size. The giant counterattacks swiftly, sending Kong airborne as he narrowly avoids a kick. Red Main charges once more, creating a massive shockwave that propels the demon armor across the field. The deity shifts his focus to Kong, launching a fierce attack. Kong tries desperately to flee from the onslaught. The armor swiftly recovers and joins the battle, slashing aggressively at the evil god. This creates a temporary deadlock between them. Kong seizes the opportunity and leaps from the mountain, attempting to strike the deity from above. However, Red Mane's strength prevails, and he counterattacks by knocking both of them away. The giant captures Kong and seeks to torment him by squeezing him to death. Just in time, the armor hurls its weapon, cutting the deity's hand and saving Kong. Nevertheless, this only serves to further infuriate the god. He seizes the demon armor and crushes it into dust. Redmain shifts his attention back to Kong and slowly tightens his grip with a single finger, inching closer to killing him. Just as Kong's life hangs in the balance, the deity hears a song played by the girl's flute. Redmain walks toward Tangerine, confused by her playing music when she's about to be killed. She keeps playing because her father promised to come if he hears her tune. The god gets angry, grabs Tangerine with his tentacles, and swallows her. But then, the story stops because the author doesn't know what to write next. Without his knowledge, another assassin is sneaking up behind Red Main, ready to attack. Hearing the noise, Ling rushes to help Kong and takes down the attacker. Guan Ning arrives, but they're too late Kong is already badly hurt. They call for an ambulance and rush Kong to the hospital, but his life is in danger and the book is still unfinished. Surprisingly, Li enters the room and tries to bribe them as a last effort. He offers them a lot of money to kill Kong and keep quiet about it. Ling quickly rejects his weak attempt at negotiation. She knocks him onto the bed and hits him in the face. Having no other options, Guan Ning chooses to complete the novel himself in a desperate attempt to save his daughter in the alternate world. The story unfolds further as Red Mane believes he has triumphed, tossing Kong aside like a mere insect and causing him to cough up blood. Yet, he starts to hear the music once more. Tangerine persists in playing her flute even after being swallowed. Unexpectedly, a red cloud of smoke materializes, and the Guan Ning from this reality arrives as the Red Warrior to rescue his daughter. Guan Ning fires his Gatling gun at the evil god, pushing the deity back and shattering his mask. He keeps shooting at Red Mane, who tries to escape the onslaught and avoid the attacks. The god manages to get closer and charges at Guan Ning, knocking him backward and making him drop the massive gun. However, Guan Ning recovers quickly and jumps into the air, delivering a powerful strike that cuts off the giant's fingers. Red Mane grows furious and attacks Guan Ning with tremendous strength, sending him crashing into the walls and launching a series of punches. Hearing his daughter's cries, the Red Knight gathers his strength and pushes back the giant's fist, sending the monster flying and rushing toward the huge tree. Kong seizes the chance and jumps down toward the god. He grabs onto the sword on the deity's forehead and tries to pull it out, realizing it's the god's weakness. The giant fights back, using his tentacles to stop Kong, but Guan Ning jumps up and joins in, yanking the weapon out of the god's head. They cut him across the body, defeating him. Red Mane falls to the ground and stays still. The god spits out the girl from his mouth, and the Red Knight catches her just in time. 
Tangerine is alive. She removes the warrior's helmet and finally sees her father's face. They hug each other with tears in their eyes. Meanwhile, in the alternate reality, Guan Ning finishes writing the novel. The nurse informs him that Kong survived his stomach wounds. Looking out of the window, Guan Ning sees something significant and rushes outside. He spots the homeless boy and the young girl from earlier. He starts singing the lullaby, and Tangerine slowly turns around, recognizing her father.